pure chaos energy. Hi, my name is Bryce and welcome to Please Press Play. This is my reaction to episode three of season two of Fruits Basket. Before we get started here, if you would please hit that like button and subscribe if you like the video here today. It would mean the world to me as I try to get to 1K subscribers. So in the last episode, we had Kyo and Toru at Kazuma's house. Kazuma was supposed to just eat dinner with them. He accidentally burnt it. That didn't go well. Uh, then Kyo's birth father came in and tried to say that Kyo needed to be locked up within the next year because he's a cat spirit. He's still bitter over Kyo's mom's death, which you're fine to be upset about it. But as Kazuma said, Kazuma did the raising with Kyo. He's his real dad. You don't get to call the shots and Kyo's not at fault for that. I just love Kazuma. I just, just, yes, I love Kazuma. He just, he, he, he gave Kyo's dad the swift kick in the ass that he needed. Although I would have liked an actual physical real kick in the ass for Kyo's dad. We also had a lot of the characters thinking about their future and their career plans. There were talks of possible marriage. There was talk of just, just going to work and going to college. Toru had a little breakdown, which broke my heart. Uh, I don't like to see Toru sad especially because she's typically so chipper, but everybody's got to let it out sometime. But yeah, it was a great episode. It was better than the, the first episode of season two, and it was nice to see the characters, you know, that I love again. Not that I don't love Yuki. He was a high point of episode one, but there was a lot of Motoko, and eh. Like, I like her, but I don't need a whole episode about her. Yeah, so episode two was much improved from the first episode, and I'm very excited to see where we go in episode three. So far, we still haven't really met Reen. I know they showed us a glimpse of her at the end of episode one of season two, but yeah, we still haven't seen her yet. I'm assuming she's one of the Zodiac spirits, although we haven't had that clarified yet. We also haven't really dealt with Akito yet, and I'm fine with that, but eventually we gotta get there. We gotta get there, we can't put it off forever. So without further ado, let's get into episode three. Oh, what what a brother to wake up to. What, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I forgot about this little situation. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Pure chaos energy. Yo. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Yuki's gonna lose it. <laughs> Hmm. Always a layer of darkness. I am scared. Parent-teacher conferences are coming up, aren't they? I happen to overhear that somewhere. Hold on. You're not going to suggest that you come instead of my parents, are you? Indeed I am. That was amazing. Oof. Sold 
Oof. Oof. This is heavy. Oof. I did not expect all this. Holy shit. I mean, gets deep when he's not just crazy. I didn't expect all this. I can only assume that such civic mindedness was the result of my considerable influence on you. Not even slightly. Just because I'm coming in class. We're not interrupting Margie. Finish your thought, Yuki. Is she ready for her debut? Come in, my dear. No need to be shy. Yuki's gonna lose his mind. I knew it. Toru, aren't you going to tell Toru how lovely she looks? Oh, nothing? How rude. She got dressed up for you and yet you tell her she must use the compliment her. Oh. I suppose it's up to me. The poses, just like, uh. Back off. <laughs> he struck his own brother. Honestly, I'm surprised you didn't hit too hard there. <laughs> Nevertheless, I must applaud your efforts, Mine. They do look very cute in that dress. This roller coaster. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm sorry. I probably didn't have much facial or verbal reaction during the episode because I was just so into it. That one didn't have a lot of overly shocking to the point where I had to gasp moments. I didn't have a lot to say because I was just taking it in because this was very shocking information to me. So that one was delving deeper into Ayume and Yuki's relationship and I had no idea there was a, a darker level to that. Maybe I forgot some stuff from the last time we saw Ayame, but I had no idea that in Ayame's mind he's kind of on a almost redemption arc with Yuki because I don't remember anything about Yuki's parents from season one. I don't know if that's because it's just been so long since I saw the early half of season one or if they didn't really show much of his parents in season one. I don't remember them talking about him being sold like a tool. That was very dark and very sad as a revelation but I'm also still confused about what exactly happened so I'm hoping they go further 
into that in the season. The storyline that really kind of made IMA make more sense to me was him basically shrugging off Yuki when he was younger and asked for help. Especially when the mom was going to hit him. Yeah, IMA just walked away and didn't care. So now IMA being so overly just over the top affectionate and trying so hard to win Yuki over at times or just to just to get some type of almost pleasant response out of Yuki makes sense because he feels so guilty about how he was to him when he was younger he said he's afraid it's too late so I think in his mind he's trying to make up for lost time he's trying to win Yuki over if he can he just doesn't know if it's possible and he's aware that Yuki isn't the biggest fan of him on the surface he doesn't show it but like he said deep down he knows that it's his fault and that's just so sad and again, I'm sorry I didn't react that much in the episode, but I was so caught off guard by that whole storyline. I thought the minute IMA showed up, I thought this episode was just going to be straight comedy. I didn't expect much sadness or depth. As always, the show surprises me and IMA had a deeper level. Their relationship had a deeper level that I didn't understand but i did really like that episode i really liked going further into the characters again i said that in one of the last two videos and i said that in the comments with some people on the last video this season is definitely delving deeper into the characters where season one was introducing all the storylines and characters so this season we're just fully fleshing out all the characters we have now ima who i did think was just going to be a one-dimensional character in the entire show has another level a somewhat redemption arc in his mind and just guilt i'm just shocked i just didn't expect that obviously i liked the fun little moments with toru getting dressed up and yuki being all overwhelmed with how cute she looked but overall yeah the big standout to me in that episode was just aime and yuki's relationship and history having way more darkness than I thought. I thought that IMA was just a character in the storyline that was comic relief and was just blissfully unaware of how dark things were most of the time with the family. I didn't realize that IMA was so guilt-ridden about how he treated Yuki when he was younger. I didn't think he would have treated Yuki really that badly when he was younger. I figured IMA was just always the very over-the-top you know, fun loving brother that maybe annoyed Yuki when he was younger. I didn't think it went to the point to where he ignored him when it seemed like Yuki was possibly even being abused. So oh, that just that episode took a dark turn. And again, I'm very sorry that I probably seemed stoic for most of that episode, but I just wasn't there wasn't enough to make me cry, but there wasn't enough to make me gasp either. I was just fully processing the information i'm just still shocked that that happened but i need to know more about yuki's parents do we find out more about this situation because i swear i don't remember that from season one but that that was a great episode again last episode was good and this one got even better than and they're all better than the first one so far so definitely invested in the season i'm very intrigued to see where it goes from here i really i wonder if we see more of ima but i really am really happy with how they're just exploring the characters just fears insecurities and everything a lot deeper this season it's weird they balance everything so well there's enough comedy to where i'm not miserable watching the show but there's there's enough depth and exploration of trauma and sadness and insecurity and guilt to where I'm just I'm engrossed and I'm so into it and then there's also enough romance to make me feel extremely lonely thank you for watching this video if you liked what you saw please hit that like button and subscribe it would mean the world to me again as I try to get to 1k I'm still quite far from that I still have a good like 220 something to go but but I will get there if I just keep going I know I will see you in episode four